Hello, good evening everyone. We are from group 9. I am Jasmine Anisha with name B0419 your moderator for today's discussion. I'm here today with my colleague. Hello Sada, hello Parveen. Please introduce yourself. Hi Jasmine. Hello everybody. My name is Sada Shiva Vasudevan. Name B0419 Nice to see you guys today. I'll pass it over to, to Parveen. Thank you Sada. So, hello everyone. Hope you guys are doing well. My name is Parveen Nagorandavar, name B0419-8010. We are here today to carry out this educational podcast on the topic of functional disturbance of reproductive organs. Before we go straight to the discussion, we have Parveen here to give us a brief explanation about what is the meaning of functional disorders in the reproductive organs. Hello Parveen, the time is all yours. Thank you for the time Jasmine. So first and foremost, the functional disturbance of reproductive organs are actually the disorders involving the reproductive tract infections. So congenita congenital abnormalities, cancers of reproductive system and sexual dysfunction are the few examples of uh, disorders. So functional disturbance will usually occur because of certain factors. The, com the most common factor is caused by the accumulation of the genetic def defects. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Parvin, for the explanation. Now let's further discuss about our main topic of today, which are some of the disturbances that can be found in the reproductive organs, such as anastress, silent heat, hypofunction, and also nymphomania. So I will explain a little bit about anastress and silent heat. As I know, anastress is a condition where sexual activity stops, marked by the absence of estrus, after reaching puberty in a non-pregnant condition and not in the proforium period, normal, under normal circumstances, the estrus cycle will continue. Anastress is not a disease, but a symptom or sign of various conditions. The state of anastress can be classified based on the cause, namely, first is called a true anastress, which is also known as normal anastress. This abnormality is characterized by the absence of cyclic activity from the ovaries. The cause is due to insufficient production of gonadotrophins or because the ovaries do not respond to gonadotrophin hormones. Correctly, in heifers, it will feel small, flat and smooth, whereas in old cows, the ovaries will feel irregular because of the regression of the corpus luteum. Secondly, is anastress due to hormonal disorders usually occurs due to high level of progesterone in blood or due to lack of in hormones. Thirdly, is anastress due to nutritional deficiencies. Lack of nutrition can cause failure of production and release of gonadotrophin hormones, especially FSH and LH hormones, resulting in inactive of the ovaries. Uh, fourthly, is the anastress due to genetics. Anastress due to genetic factors that often occur is ovarian hypoplasia and ovarian agenesis. Silent heat. Silent heat is a state in which a female cow does not show any signs of estrus that is clear, but on rectal palpation, ovarian activity can easily be palpable in the state of development or development of corpus luteum as a sign that the ovulation has occurred. It is often found in paper, last full mother in their first time postpartum or mother who are breastfeeding their calf more than twice in a day. Silent heat in the calf could be due to deficiency of progesterone or unbalance between estrogen and progesterone levels at the estrus period. So that is all from me about anastress and also silent heat. So moving on, we have Sada here to talk about hypofunction and lymphomania. Hello Sada, you may unmute and the time is all yours. Yes, hello Jasmine, thank you. So, um, hi everyone. As we know, the ovaries are a paired organ, regenerative and endocrine functions. The ovary is a dynamic organ and its structure in the reproductive period undergoes constant cyclic changes. So, are we talking about two types of dysfunctions that can happen to the female, female, uh, the female reproductive uh, system? So, first, I will talk about the hypofunctsy. So, another dysfunction that can happen is ovarian hypofunction that is a disease characterized by a decrease in the hormonal activity of the ovaries in which inferior reproductive cycles or anaphrodisia are observed. 
This is caused by genetic factors such as chromosome abnormalities. It may also occur with certain autoimmune disorders that can disrupt the normal function of the ovaries. Chemotherapy and also radiation therapy can also cause this condition to occur. So all this can be detected by doing a blood test to measure the level of follicle stimulating hormone or also known as FSH. FS, 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 FSH levels sorry, are higher than normal in females with premature ovarian failure. Other blood tests may be done to look for autoimmune disorders or thyroid disease. Estrogen therapy often helps relieve menopausal symptoms and prevents bone loss. However, it will not increase the chances of the female to become pregnant because fewer than 1 in 10 females with this condition will, will be able to get pregnant. The chance of getting pregnant increases to 50% when you use a fertilized donor egg. Next, we'll be talking about nymphomania. So, the term nymphomania that is used to describe females that present a number of sexually abnormal behavior symptoms, namely increased libido, that is sexual activity. They are in heat more frequent than normal. They roam persistently and show an increased interest mostly in males, but also in other females and also sometimes their own owners. Such females exhibit a prolonged first phase known as proestrus of the heat cycle which begins with droplets of blood emanating from the vagina. Some of these females would bleed continuously for six weeks or more. This condition has posed a problem for scientists and pet owners alike. In the case of the former, researchers tend to link nymphomania with follicular cysts within the ovaries. These cysts produce a prolonged secretion of estrogen. The problem is the follicular cysts are a relatively seldom uh, occurrence in dogs, yet nymphomania is not so rare. Currently, there is no cure for nymphomania. Like many other mental illness, nymphomania may be treated with medication, psychotherapy, or a combination of two with treatment. It is possible to manage comp compulsive sexual behavior. So it's more to a behavior behavioral disorder than more to a medical disorder. That's all from me now. I hope this knowledge will be helpful to all the listeners. This is where I say goodbye and I would like to pass it back to Jasmine. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you so much, Sada. That is new knowledge for all of us. Finally, we come to the end of our discussion. That was very educational and we hope the podcast, today's podcast has been very helpful and beneficial to us and to the viewers as well. I would like to say thank you to both of my friends, Sada and Parvin, for the interesting talk. Thank you to Tesmi. Thank you. Thank you, Sada. Thank you, Parvin. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You record it? <laughs> yeah, I started recording it. Okay, okay. Mm. Run. Okay. Hello and good. Wait, sorry again. My hand is tired. I mean, you have to edit. A lot. <laughs> Just have to cut, right? <laughs> Second one. Hey, hello, Jack. My name is Rashiba. <laughs> name. <laughs> Can I do here? Lee, hello Sada, hello Parvin. Please introduce yourself. So hello everyone. Hello, my name is Sada. Uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>